There we got the smooth text open. How many of you have worked with blends before? Okay, a few of us. The idea behind a blend is this. This is kind of an example I, I came up with. Suppose you're creating a, like an illustration of a house, okay? And what you want to do is you want to make a fence in front. So instead of me drawing one of those little pickets and then copying it a thousand times across, in Illustrator we can make one here, copy one over here, and say, Illustrator, blend it for me. It's going to make all the copies between. If you really think about that, that is freaking crazy because I could do like, I could make a shirt, I could have a button, a button, and say, just give me the rest. There's a billion stitches on a shirt. I mean, there's a million ways you can do this. And yeah, we could use brushes and all that, but blends are a lot, there's a lot of great things we can do. We can also make what's called a smooth color blend. So you can have one object, one path, and say, I want to take the color from this one and the color from this one and just blend it like a gradient, make it look like that. And what's cool about that is that you can actually make a shape out of it. You can have it blend across like a shape. This is what we used to do, kind of an old school thing. Just watch me for one second, you guys. We, I used to do this old school way of like coming in and saying, I want to go in and change color. And watch this. Let me change color on this. And I'll move, I'll copy it over here and get rid of that. I'll do this. There we go. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use what's called the blend tool to say, I want you to blend from here to here and look what I get. Okay. So for us to make a blend along a path kind of thing, we used to kind of fake it and we did it this way. There's another way to do it, and I'll show you guys. It's called uh, freeform gradient today. But so what we're going to do is we're actually going to draw a couple of shapes. We're going to draw two circles, and we're going to say just make that blend between. Okay. So what I want you to do is right below the, the blend that's up there, draw a circle for me. Go ahead and make a copy of the circle off to the right. Then what's the fast way to do that? Uh, option drag or alt drag. You got it. Right. All right. Now to blend these two together, we're going to use the blend tool. Okay? The whole idea behind the blend tool is that you're going to click on one thing and then click on another and it's just going to do it for you. So come over to the blend tool in your tools panel. Go ahead and select that. Now go right over the middle of the first circle. I usually go, I don't know why, but I go right to left to right rather. So click within the middle of the first circle. Just click. Come to the circle on the right and if you go in the middle of it, you're going to see a little plus show up. That means you're adding it to the blend. Click. So that's the way you should do it. I don't know, this is, the default's got set, something different. So don't worry, I'll show you how to adjust it. Now with this, this selected, this is actually called a blend object. What's going on here is it's actually simply got two circles and a, a line between them. It's kind of crazy. How many of you work in outline mode? Outline mode is something we do a lot. We use a lot because it's going to give us just the outlines of the objects, and it's going to make it easier to select stuff. And you can also see how things are built. So why don't you come up under view, and you're going to see outline. So command Y is a great shortcut to learn. If you go to outline mode, you're going to see exactly what it's made of. You really don't have those, all that color and that stuff in between is really not there, okay? It is. You're going to print it, you're going to do whatever, but for us, we have three things, a line and two circles. So what we can do is we can actually edit any of this stuff. You can do all kinds of crazy things. Come back out of outline mode, come up under view, and choose GPU preview, or preview. And if we want to change the settings for the blend, like try something a little different, with it selected, with that object selected, come to the blend tool and just double click on the blend tool. You notice you're going to see, it's going to say, okay, let's change up some things here. We actually have smooth color, specified steps, and we also have specified distance. So if you guys want to have like the fence I'm talking about, like the fence for the house, I've got two pickets and I want three more in between, I can say uh, specified steps, I can have three as specified steps. If you guys want to have it to where there's like a half inch between each one of those, you can set a specified distance, it's called. So we've got a lot of ways to work with these, okay? So what I want to do is just, you guys, make sure that smooth color is selected. And if we have a path that's curved or something like that, which we can do, we can actually set what's called orientation. You can change how it affects on, on the path itself. Just click OK. I just wanted to show you those. Make sure smooth color is selected. And I think for mine, what's happening here is that I actually have two, two circles with the same color in it. There we go. All right. OK. Does everybody kind of look like mine, but you have different color maybe? OK. What we're going to do now is we're going to be able to adjust that and put it on text. So I want you guys to draw, we're going to put a little text out here, like we're going to draw or create the word smooth. So come to the type tool. And what I want you to do is just type the word smooth. Some formatting options for it. Go ahead and select your text. I'll just double click, whatever. Come over to the right and you should see we've got our font, we've got our size and all that kind of stuff. Let's go ahead and change the font size, make it pretty big. And let's pick a different font. So come into the font menu. I think I asked this before. How many of you use Typekit fonts? So if you look in this, in this uh, menu that showed up, 
You're going to see fonts, which are on your system, and you're going to see Find More. Click Find More, and you're going to see all the Typekit fonts on the website. It's pretty awesome. So we can now go in and just start sorting and looking, kind of figuring out what we want to do. You guys, we want to pick a font that's kind of, kind of thin. Okay? Does everybody see, um, let me see a font. Acumen Pro, if you scroll down a little. Okay, the way this works is, if you want to pick a font style, there's an arrow to the left of the font name. Click on the arrow, you're going to see the font styles like thin and bold and all that stuff. And what I want to do is, I want to use, if you can find it, Acumen Pro Thin. To be able to use it, what you're going to do is you're actually going to activate it. So if you look, there's a little cloud icon all the way to the right from the name there. Does everybody see Activate on Acumen Pro Thin? And it's going to be able to apply it. Now, it's going to download to your machine. Now, what happens here is if we want to be able to see this and use it, we have to sort our font list to make it easier for us. So you're going to see there's actually a little cloud icon with a check mark right up here which says show our activated fonts. So click on that to sort the list so you can see everything. Does everybody see the font in that list? Acumen Pro Thin or whatever you found? Go ahead and click to apply it. All right. What I want to do is I want to take and I want to make this text into shapes. How do we do that? Create outlines, right? The thing about create outlines, though, we're going to take our blend, and I want to make it so that we actually take the letters, each of the letters, and make it a, basically a path. And we're going to take the blend, and we're going to fit it to like the letter S. And it's going to automatically just go along the letter S for us. We can do this with a blend easily. The thing is, we need to have paths. And if we use create outlines, we're going to get shapes. It's like the little rectangles, right, kind of stretched. So what we need to do is this. We're going to get a little tricky here. I actually do this more than I would expect. I want to trace the text. OK, so we want to trace the text, but here's the problem. It's already vector. So what we need to do is we're going to rasterize it. This is so weird. Okay? So in order to rasterize the text, come on up to Object, and you will see Rasterize. Choose Rasterize. And with this, all we need to do in this case is we're going to say 150 PPI is totally fine. That's all we need. And I don't want to see white, so we're going to make it transparent. So go ahead and select Transparent and select the resolution at about 150. That's all we need. And go ahead and click OK. If you zoom into it, it looks pretty nasty. OK, we're almost there. Last step, we're going to trace it. That way, we're going to get a path out of every letter. OK? So if you look on the right, we should see our Image Trace button. Go ahead and click on Image Trace on the right. And what do you think the right? And what do you think we might try and use here to get this to be just like paths? Which, which setting? I think, yeah. Let's do line art. Go ahead and choose line art. Not too bad. Looks OK. The thing is, you guys, we're going to use this to put a blend on it, so it doesn't have to be perfect. That's totally OK. Now, what I want to do is, after we trace something, I want to be able to get into the shapes and start moving them and doing stuff. The thing is, when we trace anything, it's still what's called a, an image trace object. You can't touch it. You can't do anything to it. So what we need to do is we need to actually expand it or commit to it. So if you look in the properties panel on the right, you should see a button called expand. Go ahead and click on expand. And it is now a series of paths that we can use. All right. Tell you what, it's actually a group of shapes now. So I'm going to ungroup them. So go ahead and click on them if they're not selected yet, and go ahead and ungroup them however you know how. You should see the ungroup button on the right. You can do that too. And do this with me. We're going to do the S first, OK, because it's the easiest one. Here's how we do this. You are going to select the path you want to use for the blend. And then you're going to select the blend as well. You're going to select both of them. And you're going to say, we are going to replace what's called the spine of the blend. In other words, that line in the blend, we're going to replace it with the path we just made. OK? So here's what I want you to do. Take your blend object up here and make a copy of it real quick. Select the blend. Make sure one of them is selected. And then select the letter S as well. Shift click on the letter S. Now, to make the magic happen, we're going to replace the spine, it's called. So come up under Object, come to Blend, and you'll see Replace Spine. Go ahead and choose that. And you got yourself a nice.